Hello and welcome back to the Bourbon Bar. I'm Holden and today I'm going to be doing a Bourbon Bar Blind. In today's blind we have 1792 Full Proof versus Old Forester 1920 versus Rebel Cask Strength Single Barrel versus Ezra Brooks Cask Strength Single Barrel. These four cask strength whiskeys have some things in common, some things not in common. Uh, these two on the end, the 1920 and the 1792, uh, those both have very sweet, fruity notes, brown sugar, mapley, delicious notes in it. And these two have more of a darker flavor with leathery tobacco, uh, less sweet notes to them. All four are good whiskeys. I'm not so much of a fan of the Rebel, as uh, you guys could tell by my review of it. But it has had some time to open up, and I did say I would be comparing it to the Ezra Brooks in a blind. So we're going to go through these four, see which ones I like the most versus the least. We're going to figure out what my palate prefers versus what my palate doesn't prefer. And finally, I'm going to let you guys know what I think is the best, whis best whiskey out of these four, and which one I think is the worst and maybe you shouldn't be spending all your money on. That being said, let us uh, I've had my lovely girlfriend pour uh, all four of these blind for me and write them on the beautiful answer cards. Um, so I'm gonna go through one way, give you guys some notes, my opinions, then I'm gonna do, take a little water break, go back through the other way, just to be safe, give them all a fair chance, and at the end I will review the cards, figure out which one was my favorite and which one wasn't, and that'll be the end of the video. So, that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and get right into A. These were poured about five minutes ago, so they haven't really had a chance to fully open up yet, so throughout the video, that as time progresses, we'll be able to go through them more. So right away, this one's uh, a bit bitey on the nose, somewhat aggressive, not overly punched in the face, but darker notes, nothing too sweet appearing here. I think I'm getting some baking spice. Okay. That black pepper note is definitely there on the palate. Um, not overly sweet. If I was guessing, this would be one of the two on the low, on the right. On my right, your guys' is left, probably. That crushed black pepper, not my favorite so far. Obviously, it's the first one, but I have a feeling this is not gonna be a hitter for me. Not bad whiskey, lots of flavor. Definitely a, a rich, viscous, mouthfeel to it, but these are all cask strength, so that's what I should be expecting from all of them. Somewhat salty, uh, right on the beginning of the palate. Really lets you know what's there. Uh, that baking spice comes through on the finish with some of that black pepper right on the beginning of the palate. Uh, nothing too sweet, there's some oakiness in it, a little bit of oaky tannins, but not bad. And then we're going to go on to B. <clears throat> okay. This one's already smelling sweeter than A is. Uh, not overly punchy in the nose. It seems a little bit weak for a foolproof. Hmm. Doesn't seem too sweet on the palate. Not as sweet as the nose is suggesting. There's some baking spice. A little bit of funk. Maybe some very slight red fruits. Mm. 
overall, this is getting tougher. Don't know how I feel about that one yet. I'm sure I'm going to have a different opinion on the, uh, on the other way through it, but all right, on to C. So I've been wanting to do a blind for a while now. Um, I've just got enough whiskey now. I feel that I could really um, get a good blind going and compare a lot of different things. Now this one definitely smells sweeter. This one's got some fruit in it. Darker fruits, I would guess. And it'll be interesting when I'm going back the other way through after these all get a chance to open up. I wanna say there's some brown sugar on this one. Maybe a little bit of maple syrup. Yeah, I'm thinking maple syrup. I'm thinking delicious, sweet. Okay, definitely fruity on the finish. Um, not overly aggressive or bitey. It really kind of gives me a full experience with the flavors here. Um, very sweet on the nose. Doesn't lack sweetness in the finish either. Get a little brown sugar. Darker fruits. Um, maybe uh, plums or something of that nature. Yeah, this one's good. So far, this one was definitely in the lead for me. Um, <clears throat> I'm thinking it's C and then B and then A right now. Uh, so. Oh. This one is sweet. This one is fruity. Lighter fruits, red fruits, cherries. Yep. Brown sugar, sweetness. Very, very red fruity though. It's definitely got a little bit of proof in there. Just it sneaks up on you a little, a little bit. Okay, so the finish brings in um, brown sugar. It's gotten got a weird funk to it, honestly. Um, that red fruit is there, not overly abundant on the finish. Some caramel, oakiness. Um, this one, this one, I'm definitely liking this nose. Definitely the best out of all of them so far. red fruit like uh, definitely cherries like in Wisconsin we have a place called Sturgeon Bay and up on the peninsula of, peninsula of Wisconsin and up there lots of Dork, it's Door County lots of Door County cherries um, delicious cherries this is really giving me those cherry vibes definitely fruity brown sugary and caramel this one's really good. So, um, right now it's between C and D for the lead. It'll be interesting going back through the other way um, to see how much it changes going glass to glass. But we're gonna take a little water break and I'll catch up back with you guys when uh, I go the other way through. All right, we're back. So now I'm gonna be going back through D through A. 
let you guys know how any of them change, if they all still taste delicious, and then at the end of it, we'll rank it. Oh my goodness. That's different. This is abundantly sweet now. Now I'm really confused. I almost get maple syrup on this one. That fruitiness is definitely still there. Um, but I feel like the maple syrup appeared and my, I know my mind is probably playing tricks on me because I know there's maple syrup in that 1792. But at the same time, the cherry in this one really makes me think of Old Forester. That's fruity. Okay. This one doesn't seem as sweet now. Hmm. That maple syrupness that I thought I smelled is less apparent. But it is still there just a little bit, just on the back end of the nose. Nope, the maple syrup came back. The maple syrup is there. Yep. Some maple syrup on the finish, brown sugar, a little bit of funkiness, some oak. Okay. Right now, between these two are definitely first and second place. Uh, I think my palate definitely graduate or gravitates more toward sweet. You know, honestly, on the back end of C there, I got a little bit of a funk to it. Makes me wonder if it's that Rebel. So I haven't had that Rebel very much since it opened up. But we'll see uh, We'll see how it compares when I'm getting back into B&A because I really think the Rebel and Ezra are B&A. <clears throat> okay, see now this one has more proof. This one definitely is more of a punch in the face. Less sweet. Funky note. Oaky. Some oak tannin. A little, little bit sweet. Maybe like a burnt brown sugar sweetness to it. Not much. Not a whole lot of sweetness. I think I'm getting a bit of a leathery uh, note on the finish. A little bit of maybe nutmeg in there. Um, okay. That smelled like crayons. That's funky. Honestly, kind of sweeter than it was before. Coming back this way. I'm getting a little bit of a crayon note. Like a waxy, but almost sweet. There is a little bit more sweetness in it now. I know when I reviewed the Ezra, I said something along the lines of Smarties dust. That could be something that I'm placing in here. Yep, 
There's a black pepper that I remember the first way through. Some baking spice. Um, not overwhelmingly sweet, but not the worst flavor in the world. I'm gonna A and B. I'm gonna A and B, A and B. B. A. Now, D. And C. Well, that doesn't help me, but that's okay because I think I've come down to a verdict. First place is going to be D, second place is going to be C, third place is going to be A, and last place is gonna be B. And what do I think they are? I think that this is gonna be the Rebel, this is gonna be the Ezra Brooks, this is gonna be the 1792, and that is going to be the Old Forester 1920, but we're gonna go ahead and reveal what they were starting with Last place B for me was Rebel, like I thought. Uh, not my favorite. I, uh, I honestly, it's the lack of sweetness in the Rebel that really, really messes with me that I'm not a fan of. It did get a little bit sweeter since I reviewed it, um, having opened up. But, like I said, not amazing um, to me by any means. But B was, in fact, Rebel. A would be third place, 1792. That is something I didn't expect. Um, wow, I really thought that 1792 had more maple syrup in there. And of course, now that I know what it is, I think I'm starting to get a little bit more of it. But it didn't seem that sweet on the nose, realistically, the first time I went through it. My pants are about to be blown off because something tells me that I am totally screwed on these last two because <laughs> of how bad I placed this one. <laughs> Alright, second place would be C, which is the Ezra Brooks that's makes sense. At least I know that I did keep my favorite my favorite. Uh, I am surprised at how sweet the Ezra Brooks was. Um, I didn't think it was that sweet when I reviewed it. But realistically, there was a Smarties note in the Ezra Brooks that I smelled when I reviewed it. And I guess that holds true now that I'm doing it in the blind. So... Last place, D, of course, which is actually first place. My personal favorite would be the Old Forester, 1920. Uh, lots of cherry notes. Sweetness, brown sugary. Oak, but abundant cherries, just right. First thing you smell is cherries. Um, delicious stuff. So first place is going to be the Old Forester. Second place is going to be the Ezra Brooks Cask Strength Single Barrel. Third place is going to be the 1792 Full Proof. And last place is going to be the Rebel Cask Strength. Now, what do I think of them? They're all great whiskeys. Uh, not as much of a fan of the Rebel. Very blown away by the Ezra and how good it did uh, in this blind. I really thought uh, it was going to go... Four, three, two, one. But I was wrong. Ezra came in second. Great whiskey. Um, it was a store pick for me, so you guys might not be able to find the exact thing, but definitely pick one up if you see it. Um, I know a lot of their stuff is in that profile. Uh, totally contradicts what I said on the uh, review, though. Um, but that just goes to show: the more whiskey opens up and changes, uh, the more you get to switch it up. So. If you guys like the video, please leave a like. Let me know in the comment section uh, which one of these four is your favorite. And uh, subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you in the next class.